Hancock, Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes, and Kenneth Williams in... Hancock's Half Hour. Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes, and Kenneth Williams in... Hancock's Half Hour. <laughs> well, you've done it now. That's the last time I go out with you. Come out for a nice, quiet New Year's drink, he said. Ten hours later, I was finally released from what they apparently called a drunk tank. <laughs> ah, stop, Billy Aiken. You had a good time, didn't you? If having a good time is spending New Year's Day with an oxygen mask and a saline drip attached to you, then I'd really push the New Year boat out in style. <laughs> it's not their fault you've been drinking, is it? Drinking, drinking, you call it. Try this, he says. It's really good. Go on, try it. I had two pints of Gravedigger's elbow and suddenly everything collapsed. Now I'm staring up at the world as if from the bottom of a well. <laughs> what did I say? I said, don't have a second pint. And what did you do? How did I know that the only drink that's stronger is methylated spirits? One minute I'm sitting in the lounge bar of the East Cheam Hotel. Next minute I'm being led up the ramp to a tank full of drunks. Where were you? Ah, there you are. I only had one, didn't I? I know how strong it is. You can't catch me out. Call that a warning? You didn't warn me till I'd finished it. You might as well slip me a Mickey Finn. You ordered the drunk tank, didn't you? I had to, mate. When I saw the state you are in, you tried to arm wrestle a pub dog. <laughs> Ah, so that's why my arm is cut and lacerated. I needed 14 stitches in my thumb. Ah, oh, Hancock, that was Lizzie, the barmaid. You got a bit lippy with her. <laughs> I can't go back in there, can I? And it's all your fault. It's New Year's, it's forgive and forget. They said you'd be allowed back in if you paid for the damage. Oh, well, I'll go round. I've still got a few quid. I'll just sort it out. Ah, uh, hold on there. You'll need more than a few quid. They gave me a bill while you were in the drunk tank. Well, how much is it then, Sid? Uh, £3,234.07. and seven shillings. <laughs> It can't be that much. What on earth did I do? Oh, I couldn't tell you exactly, Hancock. Most of us were outside while you were tearing the place up. This can't be happening, Sid. It's most uncharacteristic. I'm a gentleman. What on earth was the seven shillings for? Well, you know that little dog you were arm wrestling? Well, he needed a veterinary sling, and we gave him a marabone as a sort of gesture of goodwill. <laughs> it can't be happening. It's ridiculous, and it's all your fault. Well, it's not all bad news. You didn't get in the papers, and I've got a whole stack of them here. I've got to be thankful for small mercies. That could have been my career gone out the window. Ah, uh, I think it went out the window a long time ago, mate. Never mind. Cheer up. It's a New Year's, and the papers are full of drinks-related stuff. Look here, you can get a beer. That's especially made for drinking in the shower. Yes, that's just what I need. A beer to drink while I'm cleaning off the smell of all the sick in the shower. All I need is a black coffee and some paracetamol for me head. <laughs> There's more stuff here in the papers. More of your sort of thing. A man drank 20 pints of Stella over New Year's, then started biting a security guard's leg. What do you mean, my sort of thing? I've never bitten a security guard's leg. <laughs> Until New Year's Eve, you hadn't. You had a go at Big Arthur. <laughs> you were yelling something about a kebab. <laughs> oh, no, I bit Big Arthur's leg, did I? I would have to pick on him, wouldn't I? Yeah, but he's not too unhappy. He said he'll come round and say hello when you'd sobered up. You what? Big Arthur round here? He doesn't know where I live, does he? You didn't give him my address, did you? I didn't mean to, but I might have let it slip. What sort of friend are you? The man's a maniac. <laughs> He makes giant haystacks look like Harry Potter. <laughs> You're no use. I need some backup. I'll ring at Ian Ken. Oh, hello. Oh, it's been a naughty boy then. Oh, you want to stop messing about. <laughs> yes, it's all Sid's fault. I went out for a couple of pints of Watney's Pale Ale straight from the keg and Mr Real Ale here slips me a pint of distilled alcohol. They've waved a couple of ops over. <laughs> So that's not fair. If you're not used to it, that sort of stuff can be lethal. I know, eh? And I am sorry, but you've got to treat it with respect. But it's not my fault Mr Hancock here decided to turn into Dr Jekyll, is it? 
Ah, oh, ha, oh, very funny. Thank you, George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Much for inviting us around for a few drinkies. What are we going to have then? According to the papers, Ken, we'll be drinking sherry, rum and English sparkling wine in 2018. What do you take me for? I'm not drinking rum. I'm not a flipping sailor. What do you want me to do? Dance the whole pipe on the kitchen table with me undies? <laughs> I'll have you know, I got sick the last time I saw a wave, and that was when the hairdresser tried to give me a bloody blow one. <laughs> Well, that's very kind of you, Sid, but I think I'll stick with 2017. I'll have a gin and tonic if that's all right. Oh, that's very revealing, Atty. The latest research, it says here, people who drink G&T are psychopaths. Well, thank you very much, Sid. Are you saying I'm a psychopath? I'm sorry, Atty. I was just saying, it's interesting though, isn't it? Come on, there's a good man. Get Atty a G&T, will you, Sid? I'm sorry, Atty. Sid's been reading the newspapers. He's been auditioning for a part in what the papers say, I think. Oh, yes. I'll have a gin and tonic. I've always wanted to be a psychopath. I've always had an interest in helping people, you know. I think I'd be very good at twisting people into different positions. <laughs> You're thinking of an osteopath, Ken. I know, I know. Osteopaths, psychopaths. Oh, it's all the same. You must think I'm still wet by my ears. Am I? I'm not still wet behind this. Could you check, Etty? I washed me hair. <laughs> oh, yes, I washed me hair before I came out. <laughs> and what would you like to drink then, Hancock, after your unfortunate escapades yesterday? Oh, don't look at me like that. Yesterday was yesterday, and today is a brand new day of dawning for Tony Aloysius Hancock. You could always go on the wagon for January, Tony. It's called Dry January, you know. Yeah, but it says in the papers that there's no evidence that it actually works, Atty. Well, thank you very much, Fife Robertson, the television doctor. On this week's edition of East Chain tonight, we have Sidney James talking a load of old cods. <laughs> oh, it's verbatim. It's here in the Daily Mail. It's not like you to read a paper, Sid. Well, I picked them up at the doctor's surgery this morning. You're supposed to read them, not nick them. <laughs> Oh, you in, are you, Sid? What you got, then? One of those exotic diseases, I suppose. You get down the East End on a Saturday night. Fizalis, I think it's called. <laughs> no, you get Fizalis at the supermarket, Kenneth. They're little orange fruits. I heard you get them in other more interesting locations as well. I obviously don't go to the same sort of supermarkets as you do, at. I live a more sheltered existence. <laughs> You mean syphilis, don't you? Oh, yes, you both need to be more careful. Oh, you're getting a reputation. Oh, I heard people talking behind your back the other day. Yeah, and what were they saying about us? Oh, no, oh, no, who said they were talking about you? Oh, no, they were talking about the weather and you were over there. Well, if you must know, I went to the doctor because the grave digger's elbow I had on New Year's Eve really upset me. So what happened, Sid? How did it affect you? We know how it affected Tony. Well, funnily enough, I couldn't move me elbow. He said it was tennis elbow, not grave digger's elbow, though. How on earth did you get tennis elbows, Sid? You hate tennis. You go on holiday to Brighton when it's Wimbledon week. Oh, as it happens, you and me were playing tennis outside the pub on New Year's. Because some idiot bet we could. And what happened, Sid? Who won? Neither of us, as it happened. We collided in the middle of the pub garden and had got had to go off to hospital. You've changed your story, Sid. I thought you said they took me off to the drunk tank. They took you off to accident and emergency. You weren't that drunk. It was concussion. Sid James, you led me to believe I made an absolute fool of myself and ran up a bill of £3,000. Ah, sorry, it was just a joke. A little bit of New Year's humour. You hurt yourself when you fell over. So there's no Arthur. There was no dog and there was no barmaid. Oh, Arthur came over earlier with some bottles of Grave Digger's Elbow and a quarter gin on account of you hurting yourself. Well, all right then. I'll have a pint of Grave Digger's Elbow and a gin and tonic. Thank you, Sid. Oh, yes, me too. And keep them coming. Oh, you've always wanted to give me the elbow, haven't you, Angok? <laughs>